Based on a measurement, I would now like to explain the individual functions of the Seacor C200 to you. The two radio transmitters are in operation. The C200 is started and we can now see the measurement screen. Now please switch on the wireless headphones F8. In the middle of the screen you can see the results area. The quality of the peak, the total measuring time and the calculated position are shown here as well as the distance from both measuring points. To the right of the results area you will see the transmitter button. The current noise level on the first and second RT200 is displayed there during a measurement. This information is updated regularly. If you tap the button, the transmitter dialog opens. Here you can see more detailed information about the radio transmitters 1 and 2 in the right and in the left section of the display. The following data are displayed for each transmitter. The connection quality, the current volume of the signal, the battery status and the selected band pass. A satellite symbol informs you whether the current position of the transmitter is available. In the middle of the display you can select which sound you would like to have available on the headphones by tapping the buttons. It is possible to hear both sounds at the same time. In this case the sound is emitted by radio transmitter 1 on the left side of the headphones and that from transmitter 2 on the right side. You can also go for just one of the two sounds. This is particularly useful for evaluating the individual coupling points. Use the button below to mute the headphones. In the upper area of the display you can change the volume of the sound output. Use the two buttons quieter or louder to the left and right of the bar graph. The percentage value changes with your settings. Use the back button to return to the measurement screen. Before starting a measurement first enter the pipe data. At the bottom right of the measurement screen you will see the pipe data button. A schematic representation of the measuring section is displayed here. If you tap this button, the pipe section's dialog opens. In the upper area you can see the schematic pipe representation again. With the plus button you can add further pipe sections. The section activated for entering the pipe data is highlighted in blue. If you tap the activated pipe section again, the section will be deleted. In the table below, four buttons offer you the option of entering the pipe data for each section. First enter the pipe length. To do this, tap the length button and enter the data. Confirm your entry with the green check mark. Now select the pipe material. Tap on material and select the corresponding element from the list. Your selection will be applied directly. Now select the diameter of the line. Please note that this is based on the nominal diameter of the line. Now tap on diameter and enter the data. The speed of sound used for this measurement is displayed. Now confirm your details with the green check mark and you will return to the measurement screen. You will see the new measurement button above the results field. Tap the button and the measurement is ready to start. The start button appears. Tap this button to start measuring. You should make sure to start the measurement at a moment as quiet as possible, for example if no vehicle drives past the measuring point or if there are no consumption near one or the other connection point. The button changes to pause while the measurement is running. In the results area you can now see how the measurement time increases, the peak quality develops and the distance from the measurement points to which the calculated correlation peak corresponds. You can break the measurement at any time with the pause button and continue with start. In the lower left area of the display you will see the filter button. You can use this function to reach all detailed dialogues that help you optimize the result. During each measurement the C200 regularly calculates optimal filters for the respective noise situation. If you switch to the filter dialog the system provides you with two automatically calculated optimal filters as a suggestion. Tap the button. This takes you to the filters dialog. In the upper half of the dialog you can now see the filter base. 
Various functions are available as a basis for the selection of useful filters, which you can select in the settings. We recommend the coherence function as the factory setting. To the right of the graphic, you can see the currently selected filter limits on a button and below that the information about the current autofilter 1. If you tap this button, you will see the autofilter 2. Tapping again takes you to the manual filter. So you can always switch between the auto filters and the filter you have set manually. Below the filter base, you can see the correlation function. It is always recalculated immediately based on the selected filter. Below you will find the corresponding result information. The distances from both measuring points as well as the calculated quality of the peak. This gives you the opportunity to assess the effects of filters at a glance. If you want to set a filter manually, you have two options. You can roughly set the filter by tapping the curve of the filter base or fine-tune it down to 1 Hz with the Filter Limits button. This takes you to the Filter Zoom dialog. There you have the option of zooming the filter base to the selected section. This enables you to recognize optimization potential even better. In this dialog too, you can select the filter limits by tapping directly in the filter base or set precisely using the two buttons upper and lower filter limit. Exit the filter zoom dialog with the back button. Your settings are applied. If you want to make further improvements to your correlation result, you can also use an extended correlation dialog. Tap the correlation function to open this extended dialog. You can now see the correlation function in the upper half of the display. This large display allows you to recognize smaller secondary peaks much better. You can now set a mark by tapping in the correlation and you will immediately receive the associated data of the secondary peak in the results area. Two function groups lead to the optimization functions peak suppression and sound velocity measurement. Peak suppression is very useful if you see two peaks in the correlation function and one of them matches to the position of a known sound source, for example a pressure regulator. For better visibility of a second peak, you can suppress the peak corresponding with a known position. To do this, tap two position in the graphic to the right and left of the peak to be hidden. The hidden area is filled in orange and the curve is recalculated. The formerly smaller secondary peak can now be seen much more clearly. You can undo your selection by tapping the Show Peak button. Start the feature of a sound velocity measurement with the corresponding button. A second measurement on the pipe section but with an artificial leak can completely rule out the influence of the speed of sound. We recommend the Severin seminars for further information on this topic and for carrying out such a measurement. If you now go back to the measurement screen, you will see the file button in the upper right corner of the display. This takes you to the file menu where you can save the actual measurement or open saved measurements. If you tap on save, you can add a comment to your measurement. If you select the load function, you can open measurements stored in the Secor C200's memory. You can open a saved measurement from the list by tapping. Delete individual measurements or use filter functions to search for saved correlations. If you leave the file menu, you are back in the measuring mode. In the upper left area of the display, you will see the settings button. During a measurement, you can use this button to find information on the effect of noise suppression, the number of individual measurements carried out and information on the charge status of the system components. If you tap this button, you will be taken to the settings menu. Here you can choose between settings that affect the measurements or choose general device settings. First of all, tap the measurement button. You can select measurement settings on three pages of the list. On the first page general, you have the option of choosing the unit system, switching interference suppression on or off, changing the display of the correlation curve and defining a notch filter. With the button arrow down, you get to the settings of the filter base. 
Here you can define up to two curves, which are displayed in red and blue when you open the filters menu. On the third page, you can add standard parameters for any measurement. These are then proposed to you for each new measurement and for each new pipe section. The back button takes you back to the selection of the settings. Now select the device button. You can set up your C200 in a variety of ways at this point. On the first of four pages, you can choose general settings. The first two selections, switch device off and switch off lighting, service energy saving functions if no operation takes place during the time set. If you do not want the display brightness to be set automatically, the menu brightness settings opens. On the second page, you set the date and time of the C200. On the third page, you can select regional settings. On the last page, you can access information about hardware and firmware and can recalibrate the touchscreen if necessary. Go back to the measurement screen after you have made all the desired settings. The Seeker C200. Professional, flexible, intelligent.